failed, failed, and then finally we start succeeding. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back. Eu recebi um sorriso, uma lágrima, uma emoção, um riso de uma das pessoas que eu nunca vi na minha vida, que eram torcedores da BD. Acho que você tem que realmente botar toda a sua emoção dentro do jogo. It's all about crashing with style and getting up again. Hello! I'm Antti Ilvasio, creative director of trials and also prime minister of Finland. <laughs> Now I'm pleased to announce that trials is back and it's bigger than ever. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Trials Rising takes you around the world to iconic locations. You never ride alone and competition is everywhere. But competition is nothing without the players and our community has always been pillar of trials. In Trials Rising, we work with our players more than ever. To explain more, let me introduce Brad Hill, also known as Professor Fat Shady. You made a mess. <laughs> well, thank you, Auntie, and hello, everyone. 
I see OTHD down the front. I see you. I became a fan of trials because it's challenging, but so rewarding when you overcome something difficult. But I soon realized that a number of players struggled with the harder levels. So in 2013, I created the University of Trials, a YouTube channel dedicated to mastering trials writing. Now, before I go on, Ubisoft star players, I want you guys to make some big noise right now. All right, well, five years ago, I was a star player just like them. But when Red Links began work on Trials Rising, they approached me to design and create all of the tutorial content within the game. It has been an amazing experience for me, but I wasn't the only one involved. <clears throat> 20 community members known as the Trials Elite, up there, have been involved in the development of this game for the last two years. Whether they were track builders, streamers, or speedrunners, each brought something special to help shape this game. Now, if you want to get involved, register online at trialsgame.com for a closed beta happening later this year. Good. Is it? Yeah. Let's go. Hey, 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 hey. What? You don't, we're not going to put a big coming soon up here. Oh, I think oh. people are going to want to know the release date. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Trials Rising will release on February 2019 on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and the first time ever also Nintendo Switch. <laughs> if you are E3, come to our booth and we'll show what Trials is about. Crashing with style and getting up again. Let's get out. Let's go. Thank you, Let's everyone. Go. Have a nice E3. Yeah. My name is Julian Garrity, and I'm the creative director on Tom Clancy's The Division 2. <laughs> on Black Friday, a strain of the smallpox virus was released on dollar bills in New York City. The infection and chaos spread across the nation. Seven months later, the virus has mostly burnt itself out but America is tearing itself apart. Washington, D.C. is at the heart of this battle. Under constant threat from dangerous factions, civilians are trying to rebuild. In their survival lies the seed for the rebirth of society. Thank you. 
moment. I didn't do anything. Some of you may believe the rules are unfair. That's too bad. Quiet, you I said no more talking. The rules are not subject to negotiation. Shut up! Defy the rules, and there will be consequences. Let's go, come on. Examples will be made. On your knees. Keep still. You are the last line of defense for those civilians and for the country. If you fail, history will be written by tyrants. If you succeed, history will remember the few brave heroes who fought to save a dying nation. This setting lays the groundwork for a compelling story-based campaign in which your actions have a clear impact on the lives of civilians. In the Division II, Washington, D.C. must prepare for the greatest threat it has ever encountered. To face it, you and your fellow agents will need to bring your equipment and tactical abilities to the next level. Once agents reach the end of the main campaign, it's time to select a new progression path by picking a specialization. It starts with the choice of a signature weapon, powerful and unique weapons that complement the rest of your equipment. As you progress with your specializations, you will not only grow in power, but also unlock additional tools and abilities, including exclusive versions of skills. Specializations enable you to truly complete your own personal playstyle, but also to synergize with other players and take team play even further. Speaking of teamwork, I'm excited to announce that for the first time, eight players will be able to partner up to face the ultimate endgame challenge. Raids are coming to the Division Two. We learned a lot. We learned a lot from working on the first game. And with the Division 2, we're launching with plans for years of frequent major content updates. Today, we're ready to outline our plans for year one. We will be launching three DLCs in the form of episodes. Each one will bring new story, new areas to explore, and new activities. And the best part, all of these episodes will be completely free for everyone. Where's my division team? Stay tuned after the Ubisoft conference for an exclusive 30-minute deep dive into our playable E3 demo during our post-show. As you can see, they're getting ready right now, and they'll be playing right after the conference is done. <laughs> Until then, remember, this is history's defining moment. Hope for the future 
lies in you, agents of the division. Thank you. Hi, I'm Xavier Manzanares, lead producer. And it's an honor to be back here one year after we announced for the first time and released the game. It was incredible. So as a team, I just wanted to thank all of you for the support and all the feedbacks we received. Thank you. So we also started a year ago to work on a brand new adventure and with a brand new hero as well, one that we cherish and we love, Donkey Kong. So for today, uh, we wanted to uh, celebrate the upcoming release of the Donkey Kong Adventure. And uh, what better with music than with Grant Kirkhope, our composer, and the band Critical Hits. So please enjoy. Thank you. Changed your entrance, so it changes apologies. every day, every second to change. Yeah, let's hit this way. Thank <laughs> you. 
the old guard was wiped out. Those who kneeled were now at the gates of hell. They were killing us off, burning our seas from shore to shore. We thought there was no way the Empire could win this game. As fate would have it, the tide turned in our favor again. A new wind was at our backs, blowing us straight to heaven. In our new Eden, there was only one rule. First come, first serve. It was dog eat dog. We became kings, queens, lords and masters of our own new worlds. Fortunes poured down on us. They had their empire. Now it was our turn. Enemies became friends. Friends became enemies. The best didn't trust anybody. The philosophy of the day was more and more. We were alone at the top of the food chain. thought we were. In a dog-eat-dog -dog world, we were wolves. And wolves? Hunting packs. Skull and bones, there are soulless empires. There are greedy trading companies, and of course, ruthless pirate games sailing the seas. But there are no heroes. Hello, my name is Justin Farron, creative director at Ubisoft Singapore. And for the past year, my team and I have been anxiously awaiting this moment to invite you, our fans, to join the hunt here at E3 2018. Piracy is dead in the Caribbean. The empires crushing all those who oppose them. So your next big score? The Indian Ocean, home to the richest trade routes in the world, where merchant ships carry cargo worth over $10 billion a year. And you? You're gonna steal every last fucking coin. First, you need a target. You pick up intel on a heavily guarded frigate, fat with African diamonds meant for the Grand Mogul of India. That treasure will help you claw your way to the top to become the pirate that no empire can take down. Second, you must know your hunting ground. Our reactive and evolving world is reflected in what we call fortunes, presented to you by Taljeed, the fortune teller. Now, fortunes reveal changes in factions, weather, and the trade routes themselves. Today, Taljeed reveals favorable winds. That means more merchants to rob, but also more competition. And now I'm proud to share with you the essence of Skull and Bones, a shared world where every player encounter matters. Will you fight or will you ally? This is what we call the hunting grounds. All right, pirates. Let's head to the hideout and have a great E3. Your hunt for the convoy starts here, in your hideout, deep within the Chagos Islands. This hidden pirate den provides everything you need for your next strike. From your shipyard, you choose the Black Horn for the upcoming battle. The strong winds will boost its speed, giving its battering ram a devastating punch. So, what's it gonna be? Next, you choose the right crew and gear for the mission ahead. Demi cannons are slow loading, but deadly at short range. Rockets are blazing fast, and deal powerful damage from every angle. With everything loaded, let's head out. The winds are strong and the day is clear. 
That means more merchants to rob. But also more rival pirates out looking for a quick score. According to your intel, the convoy is sailing past a Portuguese fort, taking advantage of the strong winds. There she is, with our loot! That fort is too strong to simply sail past. Its cannons can blast you out of the water. You need to find a way to sneak by before the convoy slips away. Rex sighting, Captain! Fortunately, deception is another tool in the pirates' arsenal. Let's fool these blackguards! Disguised as a Portuguese merchant, you try to creep past the fort. Captain, if we engage, they will see it through our guides. Portuguese merchant and escort! This island provides perfect cover for a surprise attack. Plot the optimal course for an intercept, rigging your sails for speed. You want to catch your victim off guard. Captain, there she is! Piracy Bay! Portuguese warship. At the helm is a Commodore. Too tough to handle on your own. Even worse, you could lose your loot. You need help, and you need it fast. That one's with us! Other captains have answered your call. Four against one should even the odds. side forms a tight squadron using a coordinated battle plan. The enemy strikes first. The first ship goes down, breaking your formation. Cannons on you. You brace for fire, absorbing the first blow. Your allies maneuver for position. The Royal Fortune acts as a tank, drawing the Commodore's fire. It unleashes its special ability, Siege Mode. Once anchored, it can fire its cannons without limits. The Jaeger slips into position with its powerful cannon. Its special ability delivers eight shots in a single blast, increasing the odds for a critical hit. The Royal Fortune can't hold out much longer. It's up to you to land the killing blow. one. But the glitter of gold can turn new allies into deadly enemies. For there is no honor among thieves.
QVC. Hello, everyone. My name is Elijah Wood, co-founder of Spectre Vision. Though we're known for our film content, we're also avid gamers, and the opportunity to partner with Ubisoft was something we had to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And my name is Benoit Chi, game director on Transference. <laughs> Together, we combine the storytelling techniques of film with the interactivity of video games, enabling us to create this unique, deeply immersive world with a dark and unsettling narrative. Have you ever dreamed of entering someone else's consciousness? exploring their darkest thoughts and most intimate secrets. In Transference, with Transference, we're bringing a... No. With Transference, we're bringing a first-person <laughs> exploration game into a chilling new dimension. To escape, you must go hands-on to search for clues, solve puzzles while shifting between the perspectives of each family member, and attempt to piece together their mystery. This fall, in VR and on traditional platforms, we welcome you to uncover the secrets hiding in this mind-bending psychological thriller that will leave you with haunting memories long after you put down the controller. This is Transference. What's going on? Okay. Here's Mom. You're gonna sit here real soon, okay? Just hold still. Don't. Okay. Are you comfortable? I know this rig's a bit cumbersome, but that's always the way with these new prototypes, huh? And all you have to do is just... just be. I know things haven't been so great lately, okay? Something I do. Bad. I've been a lousy father, huh? I'm unable. Lousy husband, too. You should go to sleep. You've seen how rotten that's gotten, huh? But all that is gonna change. We're all gonna be together. All of our hard work. Reverse the process. All of our sacrifices. That's my gift to you. Us. Help me! Help me! Please! Dad? Why are you doing this? I love you. Son. I love you with all of my heart. so long for this. We will sacrifice the world of Atlas to the harvest. What are we waiting for? Let's get out there. Go show them what Starlink can do. The Legion is growing. There aren't enough of us. We need to find help from every planet in Atlas. The more of us there are, the stronger each of us is. Exactly. You must Feed my legion. Drax isn't going to stop until we end this. I will finish this.
Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Laurent Melville, Creative Director on Starlink Battle for Atlas. Last year, revealed our modular Starship innovation to the world and showed you how players could reconfigure it instantly to adapt to any challenge. This year, we're excited to show you what the, the depth of the open world that we've built and put the game directly into your hands. We're going to take you on a journey 400 light years away from Earth to the Atlas star system. Discover exotic planets, meet fascinating local factions, and forge your alliance. Upgrade your pilots, starships, and gear, and unleash devastating combos to save Atlas from the relentless Forgotten Legion. The mission will not be easy. Atlas is a dangerous place and our heroes will need all the help they can get. Could use a little help here. Can you hear me? To welcome Star Fox in Starlink, Battle for Atlas. Isn't it, Laurent? It's amazing. <laughs> Ever since I started working on Starlink, I wanted to invite Fox and his crew into the game. And Star Fox on Super Nintendo was the first 3D game I've ever played, and I'll never forget that. And so for me, this moment is a dream come true. <laughs> And this dream was only made possible thanks to our long relationship with Nintendo. We can't wait to play Fox on the Nintendo Switch. I would like to give, you, to give a special thanks to a dear friend with, with us in the audience today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Miyamoto. <laughs> How are you? So I, I know you were coming today, so I came with a gift. You know, it's the first prototype of the vessel that you we such so. Do you like it? Super! So, thank you very much. Um, so, it, it is uh, actually um, a vessel that has been created by the team, and they, they would be so happy to see you backstage. So, let's go and join them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miyamoto, and thank you, Eve. For everyone at E3, please be sure to come by the Ubisoft booth, where we'll have a full hands-on demo for you to try. For everyone else, 
Starlink will launch on all consoles on October 16th with Star Fox as an exclusive Nintendo Switch experience. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Check out StarlingGame.com to pre-order the game right after the conference. Thank you so much for being here today, and have a great E3. Streamers, cosplayers, artists, tournament organizers, and all of our players, you are for honor. Indeed. Hello, I'm Roman Campos Oyola, Creative Director. Whether it be upgraded stability with the dedicated servers, release of heroes, constant balancing, and new training tools, we would not be here without your passion and commitment. You've helped us enrich the experience. Thank you. Please. But actions speak louder than words, right? In celebration of E3, we are inviting new players to join. So if you haven't played For Honor yet, now is your chance. Starting today and until next Monday, we are giving away the PC Starter Edition on Uplay. Download it this week on PC, and it's yours for free. So come, join the fight with us. But that's not all, because building on everything that we've learned, we are now ready to expand our world. After the great cataclysm that brought knights, vikings, and samurai to fight, civil war consumed China. Warriors of the Wulin factions fought each other, but failed to establish order. Amid the chaos, four warriors of the Wulin now marched west. 
with a new faction, four new fighters, visual enhancements, and single-player content yet to be revealed. The Marching Fire update is our biggest and most ambitious addition so far. But this update would not be complete without answering a huge request from our community. A new 4v4 multiplayer mode fulfilling the classic medieval fantasy. You know what it is? The Castle Siege. So please, allow me to introduce you to this new mode, Breach. I'm Delphine Dosset, brand director on The Crew 2. In just a few days, freedom will be yours. Freedom to get your hands on your dream car, bike, boat, or plane, and unleash your passion for motorsports all across the United States. The Crew 2 releases on June 29th, and we are very happy to announce that the open beta will be available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, on June 21st. But there's more. You can preload the open beta right now, so you'll be ready to hit the road as soon as it starts. From all of us at Ivory Tower, welcome to The Crew 2.
can a child save us all? If he's sentenced to die. Tell me, Nikolaus. Tell me before you let our son go. Father? No! Where we begin does not define who we will become. Before you, I see a path. Built by friendship and family. Love and loss. War and bloodshed. You were sent by the gods to protect this world. You carry the blade of Leonidas. Act like it. As you write your odyssey across the mountains and the seas, remember, the fate of Greece journeys with you. Thank you, thank you. I'm Jonathan Dumont, creative director of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey is more than just an adventure. It truly is a role-playing journey. You will explore on land and sea one of the most iconic and influential settings in human history, ancient Greece. The golden age of Athens saw the rise of democracy modern medicine, revolutionary art, and Western philosophy. But it was also a time of war, a devastating conflict between Sparta and Athens. The Peloponnesian War divided the Greek world and changed the course of history. In this world of contrast and opportunity, this land shaped by the gods rages a battle between order and chaos. This is where your adventure begins. You, a simple mercenary, an outcast, to take on an incredible quest to save your loved ones and become the legendary Greece, uh, Greek hero uh, Greece desperately needs. Our teams in Quebec and from around the world have spent the last three years putting all their energy, passion, and dedication into this project. We have continued to transform Assassin's Creed into an epic RPG experience. An RPG in which you will not just play an Odyssey, but your Odyssey, shaped by your actions and choices. And the first choice you'll make at the start of the game is to choose your character. <laughs> Alexios or Cassandra. And you play that character for the entire game. You share the bloodline of a legendary Spartan hero and bear his mysterious weapon. Your turn. Leonidas' spear. You're old enough now. My father's spear holds a certain burden, but... You are ready. Think of Leonidas. He had great courage. And he made a great sacrifice. You share in his blood and the strength he possessed. The broken spear of Leonidas gives you access to powerful ranged 
combat, and stealth abilities that you can unleash on your enemies. And for the first time, we have deeply changed the way we tell stories in Assassin's Creed. You can now truly interact with history like never before. <laughs> Perhaps when I was thinner, both in weight and philosophy. So tell me, were you able to resolve the situation without bloodshed? The rebel had guards. I relieved them. Hmm, interesting. You thought the life of a thief and a murderer was worth more than that of soldiers doing their duty. I wasn't even thinking about him, to be honest. And what of the rebel? He should be halfway to Mykonos by now. Oh, really? You let that lunatic run loose? Are you sure that was wise? I'm not sure approaching you was wise. Our choices are like ripples on water. They seem tiny and insignificant at the beginning, but they can become devastating tidal waves by the time they run their course. Over the next few days, you can experience this for yourself here at e in our playable demo. And for you at home, here's a full gameplay sequence of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Thank you, have a great E3. Mykonos Island, built from the corpses of giants slain by the legendary Iraklis. Read me the note again. Eagle-bearing Mystios, that's you. We are a small but fierce group of rebels who'd pay you handsomely to help us overthrow our Athenian oppressors. A warrior named Diocles fights with them. None who face him survive. Please, Mystios. Our people are dying. Signed, Kira. What did your informant tell you? Word has already spread of you sinking those ships. There's a price on your head. Whew, that didn't take long. There's also word of Spartans landing on Mykonos. So, I'm here to find Kira, who wants me to kill the Oclis. An Athenian ally. Who's at war with Sparta? And don't forget the bounty! Business as usual, then. <laughs> Gods protect you, Cassandra. Thanks, Varnavas. But they'll be too busy protecting the Ocles from me. We can spot it! Go! I'll handle this! Fight them for all your work! Can't be good. You're 
chasing your own death, mercenary. You won't escape me! You want my head? Come and take it! You can't defeat me! should have left me alone. Navas was right. Spartans have made themselves right at home. I'm looking for Kira. What do you want with her? Ha! The mercenary who bears the Eagle of Zeus. You got my message. It said something about paying me handsomely. <laughs> Mercenaries. Athenians have enslaved our people for too long. Help us free Mykonos from their grasp, and you'll have more Rahmi than you can carry. I'm here to kill the Ocles, not go to war. Which is why I sent word of our rebellion to you and Sparta. My men are ferocious in a ground assault. But we're outnumbered. And the Ocles fights with the fury of Ares. Join us in battle. If you're half the warrior Kira says you are, we'll grind these Athenians into dust. All right, Spartan. I'll fight with you. But the Ocles is mine. To battle, then.
everyone, and thank you for joining us. And thanks to everyone watching from home. To our teams, it's an honor to work with some of the best in the world. Congratulations on a great show. Yeah. I am a good. I am an I am an optimistic guy, and I am particularly excited about the future of technology and the positive role games will play in shaping our society. To create these games, we need to work even more openly with you, the gamers, because we know when we do that together, everything gets better. So have a great history. Thank you very much. That was an amazing conference, but we're not wasting any time. We're jumping right into it. Uh, we're going to show live exclusive gameplay of The Division 2. Yeah. I have with me Matthias Carlson, uh, Matthias Carlson, right? Producer. Matthias Carlson, yes. Uh, and um, Christian Panner, uh, game director and producer, respectively. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Yeah, you excited? Super excited. Yeah. Amazing. Well, congrats on the exciting reveal at the Microsoft conference and obviously the amazing news during the UB conference. Yeah. So uh, today, to our left, we've got Yannick Bonchereau, comm dev on The Division 2, and three other devs from the massive development team. They'll be showing a four-player co-op um, tackling a uh, control uh, post. And uh, Yannick will be walking us through a little bit uh, into his strategy. But first of all, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, what are we going to see here? Well, th this is, uh, first of all, actually the, the E3 demo that we're showcasing here at E3. So right? people can play this yes, at, the LAC, yes. at the Ubisoft. If you're in LA and you're going to E3, you can play what they's playing right now. So that's, that's, awesome. that's really cool. So this is uh, it's a tiny little slice of the open world mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. in the Division 2, right? And this is actually, they're on their way towards that same crash site that we saw in the Right, the, uh, um, the Microsoft brief, yeah. Yeah, the crash of the Air Force One. Except exactly. right now, uh, it's happening at a different entry point than what was shown at the Microsoft conference. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. And um, and so obviously the big reveal was the setting, Washington D.C., uh, capital city of America. Uh, uh, Christian, I want to ask you, what was the reasoning behind that? Can you tell us a bit more? Yes, absolutely. We we were very excited to showcase that yesterday in our reveal and uh, to show more, of course, today. Um, we have uh, multiple options, so we, we investigated multiple options, uh, but for us, uh, Washington DC felt like the natural choice uh, for two obvious reasons. One, of course, is the seat of power in the US, mm -hmm. and second, it's also the home of the headquarters of the division. Right, the HQ of the division agents, Absolutely. right? That's awesome. And I can see there is no more snow nor ice. Yeah, can right. you tell us a little more about uh, really the timeline from the division to the division two? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Was uh, in Washington DC, we are now in the middle of the summer, seven months after the event in uh, New York City. So uh, this the summer, the season allow us to to showcase a vibrant city where nature is now uh, nature is now taking uh, over the city. It's beautiful. Hey, Yannick, can you do just like a pan? Oh, I guess you're in action right now, but just like the pan <laughs> of the of the city here. I mean, obviously, it's it's beautiful um, in its own way. It's got character. <laughs> um, uh, Yannick, why don't you tell us a bit more on how you uh, plan to tackle uh, your playthrough? Try to you know spread around actually so. You know, we can have a bit of a tactical approach to things and not just like face tank. Uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, we'll see how that plays out. I think we should pay extra attention to Yannick. Yes, J exactly. Judge and, 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 and just judge him. Don't no judge pressure. Me. I've been <laughs> judged for my hand wave already earlier. So. Um, okay, so Matthias uh, and Christian, I, I played some of the division. Uh, I haven't played hundreds of hours, like the thousands of players out there. Um, if there was a few things you could say about the division 2 that new players should know, uh, what right. would you say? The list is long. I mean, we're uh, we're very excited, both as gamers at the office and as devs, right? Of all the things we refined, tweaked, and tuned from the Division One, uh, everything from the combat to you know, refining the RPG and right. you know, all that. So there's yeah. a lot of that, but also a lot of new things. So I think where they are right now, mm -hmm. the open world is one of them. Uh, it's first of all 20% bigger than, oh, wow. than the first game, New York, and it's very, very faithfully recreated, almost one-to-one. -one. 
uh, with the actual actual that, DC, right? That's amazing. And, uh, and, and and sorry to cut you off, but uh, Christian, you uh, you mentioned so you guys chose watching the DC. I'm curious, did uh, the team take any trips there to kind of uh, really uh, get an authentic recreation of Washington DC? Absolutely, we had multiple trips after we chose that this setting, and uh, we met with uh, different uh, architects from the city, with urban explorers, with artists from uh, local oh, artists to awesome. make sure that everything uh, is, you know it's uh, looking so, beautiful in, in the game. So people living in Washington DC can kind of uh, walk around and try to find their, their homes? Is Absolutely. <laughs> Although this is an interpretation of uh, Washington, our interpretation of Washington DC is going right. to be a bit uh, <laughs> more... Uh, they say with na more nature into it. So. Yeah, absolutely. But but then also th this this open world in the Division Two is very much alive. We we put a lot of love, and sweat, and effort into right. uh, creating this living world system where uh, not just the enemy factions of the world spread out in different areas, right? But also the civilians that you're fighting to help and protect. They're all doing things in the open world dynamically. Oh, that's awesome. So, so they're, they're acting on, you know, needs for resources and goals of what they're trying to achieve, not least to control these key strategic locations like mm -hmm. this uh, control point here by the, by the crash site. And this creates a lot of movement and uh, right. activity and ultimately things we need to do as a player and surprise. Because right. okay. you don't know what's going to happen around the next corner. Right? Absolutely. A lot, of, a lot of gameplay opportunities right. for the player to kind of pick and choose exactly what it is that they want to do. Um, and so right now, uh, they have Get reached the control the point, I, I, I take it. How are yes. you doing there, Yannick? Uh, that's fine. We are kind of, you know, we all enter from the same area actually. We just try to uh, <laughs> rush into it and uh, we are pushing our way through. So far, it's fine, but we have the tank <laughs> coming now, so... Oh, well, good luck with that. Uh, Matthias, uh, so what faction are they uh, playing against right now? They're playing against a faction called the True Sons. Uh, nasty, nasty people. Nasty people that, yeah. they, that they should get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, um, I know another uh, big reveal, big new feature that um, uh, was mentioned during the Ubisoft conference are the specializations, right? right? Uh, can you tell me a little more about that? Specialization is really a adds a new extra layer and dimension to Endgame, where you've been you've been going on this incredible journey through through the game, through you know the leveling game, the campaign. You've been growing both power and capability. Right. You know you've been getting new skills, mods for those skills, weapons and gear, etc. When you get to Endgame, you're presented with a choice of how do you really truly want to specialize now. Right. The first choice is the signature weapons that we saw in the conference, right? Um, right, and I think it's important to, to note, I think, uh, that what these specializations, they're not like roles that a player kind of sticks to. They no. can kind of choose to grow which skill tree, am I right? Absolutely. Each one of them is, is a progression track in itself. It's not just a signature weapon. And this signature weapon, is important to note, it sits on top of the rest of your toolbox. You're not right. changing something out, you're gaining more things. Right. And, and then, uh, very much along the lines of the, the design philosophy that we have, you're growing capability. So you can progress one specialization all the way, mm -hmm. then the next one, and the next one. And then, and then you then become get, the ultimate exactly, player. Exactly, <laughs> you, you get full flexibility to to. to and you're going to need to become that because we also announced today that for the first time in a division game we have raids. Oh yeah, that's right. absolutely yeah. incredible uh, challenges. That's an eight player co-op, is that absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. it's up to eight player co-op and you need to be prepared for that. It's going to be very hard to, to tackle that challenge. That is very cool. Uh, Yannick, how are we doing here? Uh, <laughs> Like that. Like I'm just that? blowing stuff up with my uh, grenade launcher. Have you been so, downed yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Yannick, you're playing the uh, demolition um, special specialization. Am I right? Yes. Can yes, you can you show us uh, what um, what's uh, signature weapon you've got equipped there? Yeah, I got that. Uh, whoa, I got that nice uh, nice grenade launcher here. Uh, and so I get to make a lot of very nice explosions. <laughs> <laughs> you get to blow shit up. Yeah, like that. <laughs> And uh, our other uh, massive developers here, um, uh, I believe, are playing uh, Survivalist and Sharpshooter, am I right? That's correct. Um, I don't know if we can get...